morning, YouTube. Happy Friday. I hope you and your family are well. This week, I thought I would take a little bit of a different approach and show you how I am bringing a lab experience to my kids. It's been about two weeks in the making. I've really had to think about like what the kids could possibly have at home that would be ready and able to use. I kind of thought that what I would do is record a video that talks about the planning aspect and then next week I would post the implementation and talk about some reflections and how it went. I want to show you what I've been working on and I think the goal will make a little bit more sense after I show you this. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love to incorporate student choice wherever possible. Up until this point, I've really been using menus, but I thought this would be a great option for a choice board now because I want them to be able to pick a single lab experience that they wanna work on and then they can pick one assessment. And so um, I wanted to pick things that the kids could find the materials pretty easily. So chromatography, rock candy, the salting roads and hot ice are all pretty like easy household chemicals that students would have. And so for ease of use, I incorporated links under each picture so that when the kids click on the link, it shows them materials right away so they can see what they need. And then it gives them details about how they should be recording their data and then the procedure. So um, they have really everything that they need at their fingertips. And all of the different links take that kind of form where if they click on it, they should be able to very simply see like, okay, if you look at rock candy, for example, the materials, the data, and the procedure, and then it provides some helpful hints. Um, I am also thinking about including audio notes a little bit later on this weekend. Once they pick their lab experience and get their data, then they can choose the assessment type that they want to incorporate. So they have the options of creating a model, conducting an investigation, or doing some sort of claim evidence reasoning and uh, analyzing and interpreting their data. And so if you notice, this all really aligns very well to the science and engineering practices of the NGSS. So I thought by giving them an authentic assessment um, that's kind of rooted in three-dimensional learning, because I think in the distance learning experience, that's one thing that's lacking. Yeah, okay, I'm definitely having my students look at patterns and um, you know make claims and support them using evidence, but it's not as, it's kind of like diet and GSS. Um, they're not actually in the classroom doing the experiences. And so I think by allowing the students to conduct investigations and make claims, and I think this really allows the students to make meaningful connections with the content. And then of course, once they're done, they have to submit their work. And so that is going to be basically a Google form where the kids can submit their video link. They could submit their Google Slides presentation or whatever they have to submit to basically show me that they completed the experiment and they followed through with the assessment. One question you may have as I kind of get ready to do this with my kids is like, how am I prepping for this? The number one thing I would suggest is making sure that you try every activity that you're thinking of assigning to the kids. Just like if you were doing a lab for the first time, chances are you're trying the lab out in your classroom. I definitely wanted to run these experiments at home just to kind of see what maybe trouble they could run into, like if it wasn't working. Right now I actually have some rock candy growing. I need to work on that recipe a little bit more, but trying out the experiments will make it a little bit easier. One of the things that I tried to do was um, look for activities and labs that incorporate Chem Matters. That's a, a magazine put out by ACS for high school chemistry teachers and chemistry students, and it's a great resource. And I thought compiling those articles and kind of constructing like a library for the kids to go to would help the kids like enrich their understanding and obviously help them be able to construct better explanations for the phenomena that they're observing. Another thing that you're probably going to want to think about is the timing. Now technically I have about 30 minutes of work each day that I should be giving my students. What I'm thinking is it'll take I would say about an hour, hour and a half maybe to do this. However next week the plan is to give them a quiz on Tuesday and then let them start their projects on the same day. So the quiz won't take the whole period, but I'll let them start the project and then hopefully they'll be able to submit it to me by Friday. So I think that should be enough time for them to complete it. Obviously, I'll be available in the Google Meet for them to come and meet with me if they have questions or they need help. I'm excited to try this. Um, hopefully the kids enjoy it. It sounds like they're excited. I 
did poll them to ask them how they would feel about doing labs at home. Um, some of them had some concerns about whether or not they would have the equipment necessary. And I assured them that they would be using regular old household stuff. It wouldn't be a big deal. But if you tried anything like this with your students, I'd love to know what activities you've done or if you have a suggestion for another possible lab that the kids could do at home that relates to solutions in some way. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Next week, I will definitely be reporting on how it went and hopefully showing you some authentic student artifacts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend.